President Trump is going to make a determination what he thinks is great for the country and what's fair for the country. But the fact that I was able to terminate Roe v. Wade after 50 years of trying, they worked for 50 years. I've never seen anything like it. They worked, and I was even, I was so honored to have done it. Well, I did something that nobody thought was possible. I got rid of Roe v. Wade. And by doing that, by doing that, it put pro-lifers in a very strong negotiating position. Nobody did a job like I did, including Roe v. Wade, bringing it back to the states. What I did by killing Roe v. Wade, which everyone said was impossible. <laughs> Former President Donald Trump taking credit, as he should, for the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which took away a 50-year constitutional right to abortion access and health care for women. That issue, once again, proved decisive at the ballot box, handing Democrats key victories in Kentucky, Ohio, and Virginia. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. And you can tell them to go themselves. I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. When Mexico sends its people, they're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. You gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. Our children and grandchildren will look back at this time, at the choices we are about to make, the goals we will strive for, the principles we will live by, and we need to make sure that they can be proud of us. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. moved on her and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try and fuck her. She was married. <laughs> Huge news, Sarah. No, no, Nancy. Yeah. No, this was marriages. And I moved on her very heavily. In fact, I took her out furniture shopping. She wanted to get some furniture. I said, I'll show you where they have some nice furniture. <laughs> I took her out furniture. I moved on her like a bitch. But I couldn't get there. And she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her. She's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. Them. I don't need to wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the put. Grab them by the pussy. You want. Grab them by the pussy. You want. Grab them by the pussy. A past, a past interview with Howard Stern now making headlines. Trump talking about how he had free reign at his beauty pageants. I'll go backstage before a show. Yes. And everyone's getting dressed and ready. And I'm allowed to go in because I'm the owner of the pageant and therefore I'm inspecting it. Is everyone okay? You know, they're <laughs> yeah. standing there with no clothes. Is everybody okay? And you see these incredible looking women. And so I sort of get away with things like that. Today, a former Miss Arizona who calls herself a conservative going public in an interview with KCBS describing what she says happened backstage with Trump at a Miss USA pageant. Our first introduction to him was when we were at the dress rehearsal and half naked changing into our bikinis. Tasha Dixon detailing her discomfort. To have the owner come waltzing in when we're naked or half naked in a very physically vulnerable position and then to have the pressure of the uh, you know the the people that work for him telling telling us to go fawn all fawn all over him go walk up to him talk to him get his attention she describes feeling helpless who do you complain to he owns the pageant <laughs> so there's no one to complain to everyone there works for him now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. You changed your your outlook on how to handle entitlement, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, Mr. President. It seems like it, it, something has to be done, or else we're going to be at a, stuck at 120 percent of, of debt to GDP forever. So, first of all, there is a lot you can do in terms of entitlements, in terms of cutting and this isn't hyperbole 
a vote for Donald Trump uh, may mean the last election that you ever get to vote in. This is an exaggeration. He's a threat to democracy. This is Donald J. Trump. He was the 45th president of the United States. He caused an insurrection at the Capitol. And sorry to ruin your Christmas, but he's running again. This guy is openly running as a wannabe dictator. Trump said he would terminate the Constitution so he could be president again. Do you know who also did that? Mussolini, Chavez, Pinochet, all of them shelved their constitutions to centralize power. Trump is planning to purge tens of thousands of civil servants and replace them with loyalists. Authoritarian Viktor Orban used the same tactic to dismantle Hungary's democracy. Donald Trump's chances of winning are very real. The alarm is going off. Everyone needs to wake up. We have a choice between protecting our democracy or letting Trump destroy it. It's time to get off the sidelines. We can't let Donald Trump get close to the Oval Office again.